What do you get when you cross a Wankel rotary, a classic radial piston engine and the ingenuity of a Czech inventor with decades of determination? Well, you get the bi-rotary engine, a compact, lightweight, high-revving internal combustion engine that might just be the most exciting mechanical underdog you have never heard of. So let's break it down, so everyone from the gearhead to the curious onlooker can appreciate just how cool and clever this thing really is. But before we can get into this weird engine, let's just quickly touch on the design we all know, the modern internal combustion engine. Now, they are pretty good, but they're heavy, complex and vibrate a lot. And in aviation, especially ultralight aircraft and drones, that's a big problem. But that's where Velaklov knob comes in. This Czech engineer has been working on a new rotary engine since 1988, aiming to make it better, smoother and more efficient. Knob's vision, an engine that spins like a turbine, pulses like a piston and humps with the balance of a tight ropist. If that's even a word. Anyways, so what makes this thing tick? Well, the bi-rotary engine features a three-cylinder layout, arranged like a Mercedes star. Each cylinder spaced 120 degrees apart. But unlike a conventional radial or inline engine, these cylinders aren't bolted into a static block. Instead, the entire cylinder block spins inside a stationary housing. Meanwhile, the crankshaft inside rotates in the opposite direction. The result is a dynamic counter-rotating system, where the relative motion between the block and crankshaft creates a complete four-stroke combustion cycle, without the need for a traditional valve drain. That spinning cylinder block also acts as its own slide valve system, passing intake and exhaust ports precisely as needed. Now you might be wondering how that actually works in real time? Well, imagine the engine running at 8000 RPM. The cylinder block is rotating at 2000 RPM in one direction and the crankshaft at 6000 RPM in the other. That dance is managed by a planetary gear set with a 3 to 1 ratio. That allows for a full combustion cycle to be completed every 720 degrees of relative rotation. In simple terms, the engine's parts are in a constant choreographed swirl, each doing its part with perfect timing guided more by rotation than by reciprocation. This isn't just an abstract concept either. In 2016, the first prototype fired up in a test cell near Prague. And unlike many radical engine ideas, the birotary has since been started, tested, refined, sealed with patents and simulated using advanced thermodynamic modeling. Those simulations done in GT Suite show that the engine's performance isn't just theoretical. Thanks to the rapid port timing enabled by the rotating block, the birotary achieves fast and efficient breathing, translating to high, effective pressures and torque values that rival or exceed most naturally aspirated spark ignition engines of comparable size. But a rotary engine, especially one used in aviation, lives or dies by its ceiling. And here, Knob's team made perhaps its greatest leap. Unlike the fragile apex seals of a Wankel engine, the Bi-Rotary's combustion sealing system uses a combination of transverse strips, segment joints, and preloaded springs, all embedded in the fixed housing. This means the sealing force doesn't depend on the engine speed, which allows for better sealing at low RPMs and higher reliability across the rev range. This design minimizes crevice volumes, reduces oil loss, and increases longevity. Three areas where traditional rotaries often fall short. Beneath its exotic architecture, the engine retains some familiar engineering. The crankshaft is forged and nitrated steel. Its connecting rods ride on a needle bearing big end, and the whole system is pressure lubricated via a dry sump oil circuit. The cylinder block is initially machined from solid steel for hardness and durability, but future versions aim to use aluminium castings with a coating to drop weight and improve thermal efficiency. Cooling is handled by a hybrid oil and water system, keeping temperatures in check across the rotating block and stationary housing. Even the airflow is clever. Each combustion chamber has its own intake and exhaust ports set into the stationary cylinder head. As the spinning block rotates, each cylinder naturally passes by 
these ports, completing intake and exhaust phases, as if the ports are doors on a rotating carousel, opening and closing precisely as needed, no camshaft required, minimizing weight and part count. That design also allows for wide or narrow valve timing profiles, depending on application, and gives the birotary a surprisingly flexible breathing curve. This is critical for aircraft, where torque at specific RPM bands matter more than outright horsepower. The design also cleverly folds in the benefits of opposing rotational mass. With the crankshaft and block spinning in opposite directions, the gyroscopic effects, which plague many historical rotary engines, are significantly dampened. This leads to reduced vibration, smoother running, and better control in flight. It also helps the engine to remain compact, simple, and this thing isn't limited to just three cylinders. It can be extended actually to six, nine, or 12 cylinders for more power without a total redesign. But that brings me to the question, can this design be used for more than just aircraft? Well, from the start, the birotary engine was meant for one thing, flight. So anything I say here would be speculation, which I would rather not do. But I will say, Norby is also working on a really interesting engine design meant for automobiles that heavily focuses on having next to no vibration. So if you want me to make a video on that motor, please let me know down below. Anyways, back to the bi-rotary engine. Now, this engine seems great, but is it all sunshine and roses? Well, not exactly. Of course, when developing something new, it isn't all smooth flying. The first dynamometer tests revealed partial oil leakage into the combustion chamber and tuning challenges. Some of these issues were patched on site, while others required changes to the prototype. And while simulation shows high performance potential, real world validation is ongoing. Still, the fact that it runs, seals, cools, and spins with such promise speak volumes about the ingenuity baked into this design. But what makes the birotary engine fascinating isn't just that it works, it's how it works. It straddles the line between piston and rotary, between historical homage and future potential. It borrows from the past, fixes some of its problems, and blends old school thermodynamics with fresh mechanical logic. It doesn't look like your typical engine, it doesn't sound like it either, but in an era where combustion is supposed to be dying, the birotary is very much alive and still evolving. And yes, currently it's not perfect, but let the man cook, give him some time. Who knows, this engine just might be the future. And if it's not, who cares? It's still a really cool take on internal combustion technology. But yeah, at the end of this video, please let me know what you guys think of this engine design. And do you think that there's any future for an engine like this? I, I really like the design, but before they properly test it and like use it, and put it on a dyno so we can actually see the power and we can see how efficient it really is. It's impossible to really know, but I do think it is a really cool take on internal combustion technology. And if it works, um, I mean, it looks really cool. So yeah, but let me know what you guys think down below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you guys did like it, you'll most probably enjoy most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's someone to like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, I. Oh,